Hello and welcome to our midweek podcast at First Baptist Sweetwater. I'm Jerry Hendricks. I'm with my friend across the street, Ryan Strebeck, across the street being First Methodist Church. Did I say that right? You did. Hey. Across Elm Street. Across Elm Street, yeah. We we get together frequently and then occasionally on a podcast. Yeah. This is an interesting week. It is, uh, well, we talked about it earlier. Sunday was an, the most interesting Sunday of the year. Easy to say that. Okay. Yeah. Spring or spring forward, so you have time change, start a spring break, mm-hmm. and rattlesnake roundup weekend. Yeah, very. Did you preach yesterday? Or did you yeah, I did. I did preach. I did preach. It is a strange. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so and you know it's a it, it. I don't like it on those Sundays where it, it throws us off a rhythm, uh-huh. and uh, you know being in in the middle of Lent, I get frustrated. But there's I've learned that's just what we do over here. So. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, Teak is uh, out of town this week, enjoying some some spring break uh, time off. It's kind of his annual tradition, mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. who knows what that guy's up to? We'll hear about that next week. Good. Uh, I'll chat with him a little bit. That's but, great. Uh, right now, we are we're just kind of hanging out and, and you know doing what we do. So, yeah. Anyways, it's good. It is a it is a long. You know, when you think about trying to engage in something, any season uh, that's, you know, 40 days plus Sundays long, that's that's a good amount of time to settle right. in. So you you do have, there are these times, it's, it's definitely more like a distance race where you, you have those moments where you feel like, man, we're never going to get there. And then you have those other times where you feel like you're just gliding along and things <laughs> are going well. So, well, yeah. I, you know, I've, I've openly admitted that you're my mentor. Oh gosh. Yeah. And but sad state of but, affairs. But particularly in regard to uh, the seasons of the the lectionary mm. or the sacred calendar, and we go into the season of Lent. And uh, I, <clears throat> I do recall the first time I was here that we were getting ready for our Ash Wednesday service, and it was Wednesday afternoon, and I go to start putting the ashes together. And I was having problems, and so I ran. <laughs> I, I ran across the street, learned how to do it properly. Oh gosh! Uh, yeah. Did some training this year with Teak so that he yeah. could do it properly, there you go. Yeah. Uh, or with with fewer errors, I guess. Yeah. But um, no, it's interesting. I think from two things in listening to you go go into this this season and what it what it kind of throws at us sometimes. The I, I've learned to take things slowly. And then also to keep it simple, mm. and yeah. and that's not just for the Lenten season; it's also for Advent. I think yeah. uh, that's at least a couple of things I've learned from you uh, in regard mm-hmm. to these seasons. Yeah, well, and you know, I've always been interested in your stories. You've served in larger churches where you know the the whole Easter, the lead up to Easter, is so stressful that it almost prevents it from being a formational experience in a positive way. Oh, yeah. It's a negatively formational yeah. experience to be on church staff in, a, in a, a time like Easter because everyone looks at Easter like you're starting to see, you know, churches do Christmas, these larger churches where it's basically we have to put so much pressure and so much energy on this one day or this one set of weekend services because that's our moment in the sun. That's where we have to put our best foot forward. And you're in so many times you're just thinking, this is really not who we are anyways. And and it, and so this this idea, even the way that we prepare for Easter and celebrate Easter, uh, has a lot of just cultural baggage that we picked up. I think that's not really helpful for us. Well, and it's it's interesting. I I was at camp planning last week okay. and was had five different uh, churches represented around that planning table. Okay, and so we're talking about Bible study themes and and for whatever reason. Uh, I had this thought and I asked the question, I go, if, I said, how many of you in your churches have even a mention of Lent? Yeah. And there was not a hand raised. Wow. Yeah. Uh, except for an associate of mine that's that's working with me and they've joined a Lutheran church. Okay. So, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, and an interesting deal they did, they had, so they did a Shrove Tuesday out in a okay. courtyard and they burned the ashes at oh, that. Wow. He said, and of course, you know, it's one, they go up very fast yeah. and they also go up very smelly. Yeah, yeah. But it was a, 
at least when I told Teak about this, that idea, he jumped on it immediately because it is a cool imagery. Mm -hmm. It's just a nasty experience, I think. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyways, now you kind of described what I was wanting to go into this season of of Lent uh, for you as a minister, uh -huh. kind of how if if you do let it, it it's kind of robs your joy. Yeah, you you told my story. I mean, that's I mean, you know my story. That was uh, when I served in Abilene. That I hated Easter Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was because we actually started on because we were off site yeah. to a larger venue, yeah. and we had to move cribs, baby cribs, oh gosh, in flatbed yeah. trailers. Uh -huh. You know and uh, turn people away on Sunday. I mean, it was just awful experience. And then I didn't get home till mid afternoon on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But so yeah, I, I I really work. It's terrible. I feel like I work at keeping it extra simple now. Yeah. But, but the thing I've, I've for someone who's done it, been involved in ministry for a long time, and you have a lot of others uh, friends that. Uh, in this uh, in this biz, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. how do you keep a perspective? Yeah, well, one of the things we talked about was you know you're talking about preaching and and the text that we're working through, and I think for me it's just a lot. Of the, I try to just be a student during Lent or during any of these seasons, but really Lent, where I I don't go into the season usually way ahead of time, going oh, I know this is exactly what we're going to do, mm -hmm. but I try to let the wisdom of the text kind of influence me and and if there are themes that come out of that I, I want them to be from that I want to try to get in the heart of what's going on and uh, so I was thinking a little bit about that today just when you come in and you're a young preacher <clears throat> you there's a little bit of arrogance that comes a lot of times with just this idea that we could just you know you just choose your own text mm -hmm. throughout the year and you start out and before you know it you wake up and you've been preaching five or ten years and you pretty much you could you could go back if you did the little the little bar graph on the type of text that you preached people tend to fall into familiar repetitive rhythms and so I I love the discipline of just learning these texts with fresh eyes when as they come along you know mm -hmm. so we're we've been thinking about Matthew so far this year so much and trying to get in the heart and then all of a sudden Lent rolls around and it's kind of this interruption of that story just for a moment to you bring bring you into this John story and it's been uh, it's been a great learning experience for me just the the these these texts as, as they've come along and have really looked forward to each week and so excuse me so personally uh, it's been really formational for me to um, I mean so much of the heart of Lent I think is to is uh, uncovering what's hidden and, and we see that in like Psalm 32 is one of the kickoff Psalms a, a lot of years where where David prays this, this great prayer about you know when I kept things hidden from you my soul wasted away you know my bones were just on fire and then when I when I sort of you know, let go of that and release that, and it was uncovered. There's this sense that I uncovered what I was hiding, and then you, and I'm covered by grace. And so there's this this comfort in our vulnerability. And I think that's a big part of the Lenten story is just learning to follow Jesus, who's on his way to the cross, and it's a very vulnerable experience for Jesus. Mm -hmm. it's, you see Jesus' humanity come out in these John stories. You know, he's he's at a well, and he's yeah. it's lunchtime, and he's thirsty, and uh, and, and his disciples know he's hungry, so I mean they all go get food. It's 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 um, very very uh, it's been been good for me. So when you you have a lot more, one of the things I've learned is that those of us who come to uh, using lectionary as a guide throughout the year, there's a lot more resources than just what there appears to be in that three year rotation. Yeah, and and I've seen some of the things that that you've done or or access that have helped you mm -hmm. uh, or you've showed me in terms of outlines and sequences but how do you determine uh, on a regular basis a or a annually you know but how do you determine kind of which direction you're going as far as text that you use yeah I, I'm a little again part of I think just for me and some of this is just probably how my brain works and, and I have a tendency to overcomplicate things and so I'm a very I'm, I'm a I'm the thorough kid that always was you know I, I was gonna finish all of my homework or I was gonna I didn't want to cut any corners like I couldn't yeah. I, so I was I was I was just always been that way and so my tendency is you know when you first started preaching lecture it's like oh gosh we gotta I've got to learn all of these passages and I've got to recognize some kind of theme or I've got to be able to and now I try to I try to pick 
you know, either, okay, I'm going to preach these Old Testament texts, or I think I'm going to do Psalms this time, or mm-hmm. I'm going to stick with the gospel texts or the epistles. And, and so this year, just it, it, I thought, you know, John is really something I haven't, I haven't worked through these set of stories before uh, all together. So I thought this would be a good, a good year to do that. And, and so there's, I try to just keep it on, on one thing. And then one of the things we've been doing uh, just is praying the Psalm as a part of our worship service. Uh, whatever the psalm is that mm-hmm. week, so we've we've changed that, and that's been that's been good. Yeah, I, well, I, I find it interesting that you've not because you've done this a while, mm. but you've not done the John series as much. Yeah, I think it's just been a little more sporadic. Uh, where where I was, you know, maybe in a series or something like that, I was trying to work through it as a part of Lent, and so this year I've just kept it a lot. I, I have kept it a little more simple, so maybe well, maybe it's something I've learned myself. And there are more resources for Lent, okay. I think, than yeah. there are. I mean, like, even from devotional guide material mm-hmm. are, are books that kind of help you walk that path, and there are maybe during the Advent season. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, Sunday, I also brought in, I, I listened to a guy that, often will use the Old Testament text and the New Testament when they have a similar, okay. a real similar message. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so I used the Exodus passage okay. uh, along with John 4. Nice. Uh, just talking about uh, the thirst, the, the thirst of the Lenten season, the thirst yeah. that we have uh, as we walk this way. That's good. And, That's you know, I, it, uh, it's, it was challenging trying, for me anyways, to merge those two, but uh, I wanted to make an attempt at it anyway. Yeah, well, that's so, good. That's good. But um, yeah, so you know, next week, are you again coming from John? Yes. Yeah, I haven't looked closely at that one, but I think it's John nine. Is it John nine? Yeah, it is week? John nine. Mm-hmm. And um, I also happened to look at the uh, the Ephesians passage that goes with that, okay. and it has that darkness theme again. Okay. So yeah. I think I think there'll be. Uh, multiple resources from the text we're given. Yeah, that we can make. Yeah. We, that we can good. do something well on yeah. Sunday. Well, and these are really long <clears throat> readings. That's a, another interesting thing. That 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 one yesterday was a bear. I mean, just to to try to get through where you feel like you're telling the whole story because I think the whole story is important. It's hard. You couldn't preach just a paragraph of that story and make any sense out of it. So okay. So one of the things that Teak and I will do occasionally is. Uh, if we can talk about the do-overs that we don't really get. Okay. How would you do it? Would you... That was my frustration. Because Mm -hmm. I chose to use the Exodus passage as an introduction to thirst and then told the Jesus story, then I only went through verse 15. Okay. And so I was running out of time and had to rush the whole part about worship, which is kind of how I... Part of why I wanted to start in Exodus. So I really... Yeah. I really felt like I, I, I missed the landing because uh, I was just running out of time. Yeah. Oh, I felt the but, same way. Yeah. I mean, I was pressed a little bit, too. Uh, and if I had to do over, um, I, I would probably focus more in on one part of the story because yeah. I tried to tell the whole thing. I mean, I, I walked through the whole deal, and it was a little longer than I wanted it to be. Uh, yeah. So I, I could kind of feel myself going. But I, I focused more on the ending of the story. So, it was, okay. again, I was, I, was, I was feeling like I needed to get there. But that, that is the beauty of that, of, of staying with lectionary, is that you can tell a whole different story next time this comes around. That's true. I mean, and, no. and, and then Absolutely. also the three-year frequency, it's not that, it's not that frequent. No, it's not. Uh, and, and, and I don't ever remember from year to year which I focused on, unless I were to go back and right. look at some notes. And so it's usually catching me a little bit by surprise. Like I, I had this, I know that the, the, the territory I felt like I was walking in this last week I, it felt a little bit unfamiliar to me as far as mm. discovery in that text, and and it was kind of it was personally challenging, and and I felt like it was a good, uh, just a gift, to, you know, to be able to to share. And I, but the chances of me remembering that three years from now are very slim. Well, that, yeah, <laughs> I, but I, I think there's something into what we do that the, the freshness of that to whatever yeah. time we're in yeah. is is important. I yeah. I feel like one of the things I missed out on, and you asked this before we started. Uh, Teak preached last week okay. and did the John 3 passage. Yeah. And because of the way my week was, or the way that it fell, and, and, and when that dropped on our podcast, I never listened to what he said. Yeah. Uh, and I felt like there was a lot that I could have done to kind of bridge that too. But yeah. it does help to stay, like, well, you'll be preaching all these Sundays. 
right? Or most of them, or you'll be present. Yeah, yeah. right. I'll, I'll have I'll I will have I'll have a guest uh, uh, coming up at the end of the month. But is it me? It, you know, it, I, I tried. To, I tried. You know, because I'm tried. only interim now. <laughs> right, right. You are a little more available. <laughs> I've got my eyes on you for later in the year. You know, so. Uh, oh man. Well, it's good to chat about this stuff, and yeah. I and uh, serious when I say you're my mentor. You do make me think. You may not like that, may not feel comfortable with that word, but yeah. you make me think about this stuff because you're you're more well, schooled in it. Well, and I think we just have different histories on even just you know John three and four together would be great camp curriculum because oh, there's yeah? so many similarities and contrasts, and you know, and 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 that's not my gift of taking something and really, you know putting it out there where it's just step by step, the, yeah. the clear observations that help. And so I struggle with that, but I, I appreciate, you know, minds that work like yours and, and uh, you know, my wife's this way, being able to kind of, the teacher comes out and you go, okay, these, this is how you get people in the story this way. And, you know, you can make your little chart with uh, all the things that are happening that are parallel yeah. in three and four, and then all the sharp contrasts, which are very intentional in John's storytelling. He's, yeah. he's such a master of, even where he locates things that we're not used to seeing chronologically. You know, right. He puts them in, and so it's this, we might call it a, a theological uh, timeline rather than just a chronological timeline. So it's, uh, it's, it's a lot to get your, get your mind around. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got some time to do that. Okay. You know, uh, we'll be ready for Sunday, and hopefully you'll join us at one yeah. of the places, 1030 a.m. on Sundays, First Methodist Church uh, on one side of Elm Street, First Baptist Church on the other and uh, yeah, it'll be a good time. We'll look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Us. We both got our monks mugs. Enjoyed uh, today, it absolutely. Uh, where good we coffee. first met and uh, enjoying a little coffee and conversation. Right. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure. All right, see you.